All right, guys, what's up? Today, we, I got to talk about Andrew Luck's retirement. And, yo, obviously, this hit as a shock to me. It hit as shock as everybody. But the only reason I didn't get a video up is because yesterday, man, man, yesterday was just a sad day in general, bro. Dealing with, you know, the official, uh, I guess, release from Marvel that, yo, Spider-Man is out of the MCU. You know, some personal stuff, a distant relative passed, you know, may he rest in peace. And then... In the middle of, you know, hanging out with some family, I get the notification on my phone, Andrew Luck is retired. And like everybody else, I thought, why am I getting notifications for a troll account? I clicked on it, I'm like, why am I like seeing a bunch of trolls all over my Twitter feed and Instagram feed? And then when the NFL um, official account released it, I was like, wow, this is, this is really happening, yo. Like... This is seriously happening. Andrew Luck, one of the best quarterbacks currently, at least we're speaking before he retired, definitely a top 10, in my opinion, top 5 quarterback in the NFL, and one of the more younger guys about to enter his prime years, just retired. Comeback player of the year, definitely would have been a candidate for MVP this year, and a, his team was definitely a Super Bowl contender, the biggest reason being him and the way he plays at the elite level that he plays, and he just retired. And, I mean, it has serious implications for the NFL, but just on Andrew Luck's part, I mean, I hope whatever he's going through, he gets through it. And I, I like to commend him on the courage, you know, that it would take to do this, you know, just a couple weeks before the season, you know, you, you have to think about yourself before anything when it comes to a sport like football. He, he said that he's been seriously mulling over it for about two weeks, but he's been thinking about retirement since his first major injury in 2016. And with all the pain and stress, physically, mentally, the toll it took on him, his family, and everybody, he said he didn't want to go through that again, and he felt like he was in that cycle for a while. So he made a promise to himself in 2016 that if he ever thought that he was going to have to go through that again, he will choose himself instead of choosing the game. And he said because of that, because of the constant cycle of injury, you know, rehabilitation, the stress, the, the mental issues that come with it, the physical issues that come with it, you know, he basically lost his love for the sport. You know, he wouldn't be doing anybody any favors by staying in there and forcing himself to play. So I'd like to commend Andrew on that. Guys, like seriously, like, I think that everybody needs to realize this goes for football players and regular people. If you recognize there's something wrong with your body or there's something wrong with your mind, always take the time out of your day to help yourself. Yourself is more important than anything else in this world. You gotta stay healthy, you gotta stay strong, you gotta be the best version of yourself you can be. And I commend Andrew Luck for recognizing that because not a lot of players do. And even when they do, some of them they don't, you know, they don't have that inner strength to go through with it. So I commend Andrew Luck on that. Colts fans. I got mixed feelings about them, especially the ones that booed him in the stadium. My first reaction was disgust because I'm like, you, how can you boo this guy that did so much you know, for your franchise in the short time that he was there? But I understand it because it's only two weeks before the regular season. Everybody had, you know, everybody was in the mindset that they were going to compete and whatnot. And with him gone, he really does. It really does look like he quit on the team. You know, like he basically plunged them into now a cycle of rebuilding or, or I don't know how retooling or something so I understand it from that perspective but I would ask the co uh, the Colts fans to listen to what I said earlier about mental health and knowing that much about yourself and taking the time out of day to be your better self so I understand where they're coming from I still wouldn't him but boo to him though because that's probably the last time he's gonna be in your stadium guys and I don't think you'd want that to be his last moment in the stadium getting booed out of it but um those are my initial reactions and thoughts about the Andrew Luck's quite abrupt retirement that nobody saw coming, but it has a lot bigger implications on the NFL. It's To start off, I guess, right away with the Colts, one of the biggest implications is that, and this should be an implication and should be something recognized all over the place, you need to protect your quarterback. You need to protect the franchise. And the Colts failed to do that. They gave him an offensive line. What is it? Eight years into his career, they gave him an offensive line. That's way too late. This guy's, um, you know, he took them to the AFC Championship, I think, twice. 
uh, and that was with a, with a bad offensive line. And then because of that bad offensive line, he got injured so many times. I think it was like two or three, the major one being in 2016. Took years off of his career and whatnot. Eventually ended his career. They just took too long to surround him with some type of protection. And on the other end of the ball, they took too long to give him some type of defensive talent so that he w didn't have to be the only one supporting the team. So that's one implication. I mean, we've seen more serious things happen with his draft classmate, RG3. Couldn't protect the franchise, even though you know that was kind of partly RG3's and more so the Redskins' fault for forcing him back out there. But you guys, franchises and organizations need to learn how to protect the quarterbacks and take it a bit more seriously than they do right now. I, I should know that as a Giants fan with um the four years that we had a terrible offensive line surrounded Eli Manning. I know for sure those bad offensive lines knocked off not only Eli's arm talent, but they certainly knocked off about a good three, four years off of his career. And when I when I first heard this and I really thought about it, you know, I thought about it from the injury standpoint. One of the players I immediately my head went to for some reason was Aaron Rodgers. He's in a very similar situation. The Packers offensive line, um, while they do give him time, they could definitely be better. I mean, Rodgers has been injured, what, two, three times in the past three, four years now? I definitely want to protect that guy. He could retire early. I'm not saying he will, but it's a similar situation. So, you know, there's teams out there right now that need to get their heads in the game before the quarterbacks leave them. There's teams that really need to up their O-line game, I guess. For a while now in the NFL, this has been, you know, safety has been a major concern. What I hope doesn't happen is what the NFL usually does is that they overreact and make some type of crazy and quite, to be quite honest with you guys, stupid rule to overprotect. You know, like I said, it's an overreaction to exaggerate what really happened. I hope that doesn't happen, but I do hope they take protection more seriously. Another more, you know, from the game standpoint implication is that now with with luck gone, unless Jacoby Brissett turns out to be a better quarterback than everybody thinks him to be. Uh, the Colts are probably going to be the bottom of the AFC South now. I'd say third or fourth place in that um, in their division. Uh, Deshaun Watson is a front runner, and Deshaun Watson and Texans definitely the front runner for the AFC South now. Uh, he's definitely bound to have a good year, but uh, he's also in another situation just like Andrew Luck. He doesn't have a great offensive line to protect him. And you don't want to end his career early either, whether it's by way of RG3 or by by way of Andrew Luck, where it's just you get to a point where you don't love the game anymore. You know your body, you know your mind. You need to take some time to step away from it, get everything straight, or just step away from it altogether. I mean, the Texans, right in that division, similar position. They need to surround Deshaun with a legitimate offensive line because I'm going to be honest with you guys. The only reason they would win any games is because of Deshaun pulling miracles out of nowhere because that offensive line is atrocious man I could go on and on about the amount of teams in the league right now that have terrible lines you know t and I, I could make a whole video about that how they need to improve it whatnot it simply comes down to there's not that much great talent out there anymore on the old line whether it's in college or in the NFL and that's why the teams that do win Super Bowls the teams that do go far in the playoffs are ones the ones with the best lines in the league and whatnot. Uh, one thing that just came to mind, you know, Jimmy G and the 49ers, uh, right now the Vikings and Kirk Cousins, you know, just to name a few. These are teams that are just missing a couple pieces and they'll probably be legitimate contenders and those pieces happen to be the O-line. Um, another thing that comes to mind, I mentioned it earlier about with Andrew Luck knowing his body and whatnot. This is becoming more and more, I guess, I don't want to say we see it more often but it's definitely something that we've seen in the past with players retiring early uh, we have Andrew Luck Patrick Willis from the 49ers the linebacker from the 49ers comes to mind even Cam Chancellor Vontae Davis last year there are many players now who are taking their bodies more seriously more and more and I, I'm, I'm happy to see that but it kind of goes to show how the NFL you know, as a league needs to improve their stance on safety and protection. And once again, I don't want it to be a, an overreaction or anything. But players are now taking themselves more seriously. Obviously with, you know, contract holdouts and whatnot. But they're taking their bodies and minds more seriously now. We see it in the NBA too with Kawhi Leonard and whatnot. Uh, we even saw it back in the day with Shannon Sharp where he had to leave his team and go join another. But players like, you know, like I said, like the Patrick Willis's, Vontae Davis's. 
Andrew Lux of the world are taking themselves and their bodies. They're holding themselves accountable, holding their teams accountable, putting them as number one priority because they don't want to end up the one day where they can't walk anymore, where they can't talk anymore, where they can't function, you know, where they can't be a fully functioning human body anymore, you know? Because that is that is a big risk of playing football. It's a rare chance and a rare one, but it still exists. And I, I like to see that these players are, you know, putting themselves first because I don't want that for anybody. You don't want potential Hall of Famers and great NFL legends to one day not even be able to communicate with their own family, with their fans, not even be able to walk. You know, you don't want that for anybody. That's a very terrible thing to happen, Par being paralyzed and whatnot, or, you know, the biggest risk of all, maybe even death. But you don't want that. And I'm seeing it happening more and more now with the examples I just named. And it might continue if, uh, if the league doesn't get its game together, I guess. If they don't, you know, get their stuff together and try to make it safer. But then it brings in the paradox, you know, the conversation of, how safe is too safe because we're already seeing that with some rules uh with the quarterback rule the like rules su surrounding protection of quarterbacks it's very funny even though i'm saying they should improve it the ones they already have kind of make it difficult for players to actually play defense and whatnot you know so very confusing <laughs> and very paradoxical times we're in right now but these are things that just come to mind andrew luck's injury and his retirement definitely have a bigger impact on the NFL than just saying the Colts are now out of contention and it you know allows another team to take advantage of it but these are just my thoughts guys kind of like a splurge out in this video let me know what you guys think how did his retirement you know what was your reaction to his retirement did you guys have similar thoughts as I did or do you think I'm overthinking it put it all down in the comments below but that's what I got for y'all today along with a Giants quarterback bill, which I don't think will do as good anymore now but I'm out. You're... Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. You're...